you. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. I pray that everything that has seen that that expectation will be canceled this morning. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. Tell me the rest of that verse 12. I will hearken unto you. I will hearken unto you. I will hearken unto you. He will listen to you in Jesus' name. This year, 2015, was the best year you ever lived in your life in Jesus' name. Whatever you missed in the past years, everything is coming this year. All barriers are taken away. All doors are open. You will pray and God will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. You search for him with all your heart, he will answer you. And then he will give you the request that you are asking of him. Uh, just a word of caution. In uh, Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I want you to understand there are times that we may have need in our body. And the need may appear so pressing. But it's the devil that is painting the picture of pressure. Uh, the devil is saying, if you don't uh, have that now, when else will you have that? And the Lord is coming. Is coming with what belongs to you. And just before he gets there, and the devil knows, he knows that the Lord is bringing, you've been praying for how many years now, and this is the year of the answer. And you have been talking to the Lord, asking the Lord, and the Lord is saying, I remember you. I will do Lord, it. I said you will do it. Oh Lord, and then Lord, somebody then turns to be like an Esau. It's coming from the field. And he's saying, I am fainting. And what am I going to do? And Jacob said, all right, I'll give you food. Only on one condition. Sell your birthright. You have a birthright. You have a privilege, and you have that which God has appointed for you. But Satan painted a picture of sheep. If you don't eat now, now, you will die. And so he said, okay, what's birthright? What am I going to do with birthright? And he sold the birthright, and then he edged, and he went his way. There are people that are thinking it will never happen. When it will happen this year? And so because they have lost hope, their prayer has been answered already, because when Daniel prayed, it appeared there was no answer. But God had sent the answer, and the angel came 21 days after, 21 days, that's only three weeks, my sister, you've been waiting for two, three years, you can wait for three weeks, I said you can wait for three weeks. And then, brother, you've been witching and praying and praying all these many years. Just 21 days, you will wait. You send your cards to me. I said you will send your cards to me. So, the angel said, I was already coming. But Satan, with the spirits, the prince of Persia stopped him. All those princes of Persia hindering the answer to come at the right time. That's why we're here. We'll break every yoke. We'll destroy the works of the devil. He has given us the authority. He said, whatsoever we find on earth, tell me, is bound in heaven. And you are part of this church. Your problem is our problem. Your concern is our concern. It will happen. 
to bless But don't the stretch Lord your hands in the wrong heart, place and take the wrong thing before it comes because with it's coming very soon. Here is a caution now, Second Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. Did ye not unequally yoke together with unbelievers? Don't go that direction. Don't go the direction of Esau. Don't say, I'm fed up. Whatever comes now, I will take. You are better than that. You are more precious than that. It's going to give you the expected edge. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Or what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. For 17, wherefore, come out from among them. Don't strike any deal with an unbeliever. Don't make any promise to that unbeliever. Don't sell yourself into the hands of that unbeliever. And don't say, well, whatever, marriage is marriage. Uh-uh, we're talking about godly marriage. You will have a godly marriage. These there are godless are marriages where those people they fight like uh, rats and cats yeah, every yeah, night. Yeah, Your marriage will not be couple. like that. You know, the man is drunk and the woman has the to be, you know, gathering all the vomit and everything. You will not be like that. The man is in occultism and there is a child of Satan. You will not be daughter-in-law to Satan. You will not be son-in-law to Satan. Leave them alone. Let them do their own worldly marriage. Yours is going to be a godly marriage. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons, and my daughter, says the Lord Almighty. And let's come back to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 23, and I'm reading from verse 28. Verse 23, it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Verse 28, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. You see the intimacy, you see the union, you see how they are connected together. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself, loveth himself, and already the New Testament tells us the reason why we get married. In my One of the reasons in First Corinthians chapter seven, First Corinthians chapter seven, we're reading from verse two. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let how many people? Every man, tell me out loud. Say it as if you know you are part of this. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman to have her own husband. That means, think about this, for God to create a woman, a masterpiece, and put a lot into that woman emotionally, spiritually, morally. It physically and it says i have made this just for you and for you alone the man having his own wife is glorious i said it's glorious that's exactly what god did for adam and he said it is yours and yours alone and the woman that is yours and yours alone you'll make the discovery this year the one, the, the man that is yours and yours alone, without anybody sharing with you, you will make the discovery this year in Jesus' name. 
Look at verse 39. In verse 39, the wife is bound by the Lord as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married. This is what I want you to look at. To be married to whom she will. To be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. What does that mean? Paul said, when you are a believer and you are praying and God has revealed the woman to you, he says, you're free to marry in the Lord, not an unbeliever, not a sinner. You're free to marry whom the Lord has revealed to you, not whom Paul, the apostle, has revealed to you, whom he will. And the same thing for the woman whom she will. It's not the church that will choose for you. It's not the church that will say, ah, ah, you're a believer. Yes, we know that woman is a believer, but you cannot marry that one. You're not good enough for that one. Or oh, she is too much for you. It's too, too precious for you. Who are you? If you're a believer, you go to pray. It says in this place, you are at liberty to be married to whom she will, to whom he will, only in the Lord. Nobody will stand in your way. If anybody has been standing in your way because of ignorance, wanting to play God, wanting to act as if he is stronger than God or is God, the Lord will give them humility. The Lord will make them realize that God is God, and whoever God has chosen for you will be yours in Jesus' name. I have to talk to fight with anybody. God will defend you. And God will protect his plan for you in Jesus' name. But let's remember, once Lord, that marriage is I done, once we come together, we are together, to you are together until death do your part. We're Just like I read to you, get. the husband is the head, the wife is the body, and they are joined to together. To Only death to can Lord, separate to the head he and the body. Mark chapter 10 to receive this in mark chapter 10 Jesus, verse 2 and the pharisees came to him and, uh, and asked him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife tempting him and he answered and, answer and, and said unto them what did moses command you and they said moses suffered permitted allowed to write a bill of divorcement and put her away. Jesus and Jesus said unto them, for the hardness the of your heart, he wrote service, you this precept. Here is where we need to have understanding of the, of the scriptures. We are there are people that go to the Old the Testament. To they pull out a verse. And they say, Pastor, Pastor, see this one. Yes, I see it. It says, I can do this, I can do that. You know, it doesn't say you can do that. It said they at that time could do that. Are ah, we not all the same? No, we're not the same. Jesus said that Moses permitted them, not that he commanded them, he allowed them for the hardness of their heart. Why did Jesus come? Jesus came to take that hardness away. And that's what God was always uh, challenging the Israelites about. And that's what uh, Stephen said. He said, you are uncircumcised in heart and ears. You still retain the hardness of heart. It's brought Jesus to you as your Savior. You are rejecting him. You don't if want to follow those people that have the hardness of heart. You want to come to them and say, Lord, hardness of heart is taken away. Is What's your original plan? What's your perfect plan? Okay, let, let's go now, it Jesus says. But from the, the beginning of creation, God made them male, how many? And female, how many? One man, one woman. Not man and man, not female and female. A male, a female. A man, a woman. 
It says, okay. and for this cause Go shall a man leave heaven. his father Jesus and mother heaven. and cleave to his wife, you, and that way shall be. Take your bed Tell me out loud. Uh, you know what there. the modern society when has done days, it says because of economy and hold it says because of education and your body it says because of civilization of the husband is living here in this city and the wife education the industry the economy and position Whatever the wife is living the in the same country Take but in another to town, the Lord and live how are there. they one flesh in he practical terms, in pragmatic terms, in definite evident terms? There Take are people, although they are, li Lord, they are living in the same country, they barely the see each other, only telephone. That's not the perfect will of God. Let not money come before the marriage. Let not education come before the marriage. Let no other human consideration come before the marriage. Oh, but you say, I know brother so-and-so, and he's a Christian man, and uh, you know, they are living separate. Again, you are going back to permissive will. You're not going to perfect will. You're going back to for the hardness of their heart because they say they want money at all costs, they want days at all costs, and they put that sin above the marriage, above the godly marriage. That's why it was okay. If that's the way you want to go, that's all right. Your, your marriage telephone will help your marriage, telephone will be your connection. If uh, the connecting uh, source of the telephone, if it fails, your marriage will be as good as, you know, the telephone connection. That's not the perfect will of God. It says what God has joined together. Let no man tell me out loud. What has done will stay together in Jesus' name. And uh, you, you will love each other. Not just the church, in each other. And if there is chance to separate, you will take that chance. If somebody tells her, ah, brother, so they need that too. I know sister so and so. Uh, she is in uh, Japan, and the husband is in you know another country. I can still marry the other boss. Is that the perfect will of God? I said, is that the perfect will of God? Okay, let let me leave brother so and so. Let me come to you. Is that how your marriage will be? how your marriage will be. You will stay together in Jesus' name. Now don't drop your head when I look at you, look at me. I say when I look at you, look at me. Because something better is coming this year. Something greater is coming this year. And the Lord will perfect your relationship in Jesus' name. Well, that, that's what the Lord himself has revealed to us. And he says, the husband is to love the wife. The wife is to love the husband. I can, I, I, I'm going to ask you a question. When you were planning to get married, during the worship, was there any agreement? There cannot be any agreement like this now. My sister, when we get married, I am going to uh, give you permission to go to China. And I have the dream of going to Ukraine. And so, and we might be like that for 10 years. If the man had said that during Koshib, would you have said, praise the Lord, I accept that the will of God? No. Why see that after the marriage, all the good, good things were said during Koshib, we'll be together, we'll stay together, we'll build the family together, we'll be the home together, we'll do this, we'll do that, and we'll circle together. How is it that after the marriage, we'll break everything, we'll come in back again together. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Love each other, love each other. I told I'm reading from chapter 2, verse 4. Titus, chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 4. Titus, chapter 2. Reading from verse 4. It says in verse 4 that they may teach the young women to be sober and to love their husbands. Teach them to love their husbands and to love their children. And it says, Keep us at home, helping the man. That's why you are married.
We're coming back to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Shall we pray? And I'm reading here from verse 25. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. The priceless you provision for a sanctified and we thank you, membership. Father, for care priceless for us. provision for a sanctified membership. It com we come to verse 25. This morning. Husbands, Minister to everyone love your here, wives, even as Christ and also loved the church. Name. And, and gave himself for Thank it, you, Father, for hearing that he might in sanctify and cleanse it on the washing of water Amen. by the word, that he we might present it to himself, a glorious church, Today not having sport or record or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Paul, the apostle, Our talking about marriage, God. brings in the church. And, uh, the is it um, from the book an Psalm inappropriate illustration? No. Already he told us in verse 23, that the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. He's saying the relationship the between Christ and the church brethren, should be a pattern, us, a model, a standard to for the relationship to between the a verse. man and the us wife us in a godly marriage and in a heavenly-minded family. And David. there it brings in the provision of the Lord. Look at verse 30. For we are members of his body and of his flesh, and of and his bones, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his no wife, and they too shall be, no tell me, one flesh. This is a great mystery. Shall that we is, as we're talking about marriage, we're talking two. about One, the relationship two, between go. Christ and the church. It's, like, it's a mystery. Right. Many people do not think about that. If we think about that, you'll say, my marriage Thank must reflect much. the relationship between Christ and the church. So help us the relationship Psalm between Christ and the church must supply illustration for my marriage. You take that as the model, that as the pattern, and you're looking at that then and you want you to be like to that your marriage to will be like Psalm that the Lord so loved the church that he gave himself gave himself for the purity and the sanctification of that church look at Titus chapter 2 in Titus chapter 2 we're looking at verse 14 who gave himself for us for us the church that he might redeem us Lord, from all iniquity and purify ourselves in peculiar people's seals of good works. He makes all the supply we need, all the provision we need, so that, all them that, so that he will feed Give us ear, Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the not day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, but thou will answer me. And then in heaven, we are missing. You will not be missing in heaven. His foundation is in, is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Heaven, Glorious Jesus things are spoken name. of thee, O city How of God. That happen? That's Saint, what Christ made provision for. He says, I've saved you now, but I will see you in God of my heaven. salvation, I have cried thee and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, inclined and hear unto my cry. For my Where soul is full of troubles, You'll and my life draweth in nigh Jesus unto the grave. Name, you will I am counted with them that go but down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. Three among the dead, a like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from Jesus thy heart. Also, this is that he to, might sanctify the people with his own blood, Suffered without I am afflicted and ready to Let die from my youth up. Therefore, while I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. The gauge, thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came no round about me daily city, like water. They compassed me about together. Lover to and friend hast thou put there. far from me. 
I my will be there. Into darkness. Point number one. Permanent eight, partnership nine, one, two, in a scriptural I will sing marriage. of the mercies of the two, Lord forever with my mouth and oh, I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy membership. shall be built Point up forever. Now, thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant mystery. with my chosen. I have sworn unto mystery. David my servant. And let's come then to Ephesians chapter 35. Ephesians chapter 5, and we're my reading covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that you is gone out of my lips. It says that Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will mystery. not lie unto David. Ephesians chapter 5, Thank reading you, from verse 32. The topic this I gave is, is our mystery. covenant keeping that is, God. The people who are reading it, a covenant is a solemn a agreement view of with certain binding a conditions which both parties must of fulfill. And for its benefits to be appropriated. Is, uh, for God established is for several covenants make, to make life easier. And promises. I need with somebody people, to cook my food. Like I need in somebody Genesis, to help Simba me do this. And then I need somebody to do that and do that. And the thing is only, if I can do without that, if I can do without somebody to help me here, and I'm an old man, I can cook, I can wash my clothes, I can make my room and all that. If I can do that, we don't need marriage for. If I can do that, we don't need marriage for. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 18, it was a covenant given his seed. I and land flowing with meal Christ and honey. And, church. I pray and with that each day, in Ezra chapter 6, 4 and 5, it was a covenant of deliverance, of delivering the them of from the land of Egypt, that from the land of bondage, God and to give them the land of Canaan, between the to, and, the and to David, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 18, it, it was a covenant that there shall not be and they can kick out the woman anytime, bring another woman, they can make this allegation and make that the fully receipt to what I wait, because they need to realize the great to humanity Look at and the, the all for creation. Isaiah he constantly honor his side of the part of his covenant with humanity, especially with his redeemed people. For Look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 34. The uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, I read verse 31. Redeemer, Deuteronomy chapter 4, Israel, verse the God of 31. The shall he be called for the Lord thy God for is a merciful God. And the he Lord was is saying, not, the covenant he I will not forsake you. An everlasting the, covenant. He will not the forsake thee. I made with you the covenant of peace. He will not the forsake thee. Neither destroy thee. I'll take you out of the covenant of thy fathers. I will take you to the fruitful land. It is a covenant then. similar to the, the Lord covenant of will marriage. Not forsake the covenant it's everlasting. He has given us to our fathers. So it it's is undeniable. a covenant that, that there, is a mystery it, in, in the covenant he made with, with believers. Their wives, their it's husbands. a covenant that will never be forsaken. If there and is so any default, very if there is now, any delay, the or the family is always the from is man. In Israel this study, the service acknowledged the Lord as a covenant keeping God and the Second prayer answering God. We can see that 11. in Psalm 86. Let's go back to the text again. And I'm reading Psalm from verse 2. It says, I will read verse, we will verses not 5 fail. and 6. In for thou, Lord, art God, and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy, with godly unto all them that for call I upon thee. Give thee, O Lord, unto my prayer, you and attend to the voice of my supplication. God keeps his mercy for his faithful children. In times of trouble, it's not just this in times of sorrow it is and despair, it's symbolic. 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 Of the Memory union verse again, between Christ Psalms 89, and the church, verse Revelation 13, chapter 19. Four. Say, my covenant will I not break, or utter the things that is gone out of my Revelation mouth. Chapter 19. Question, and we're how can a believer benefit from the, mystery the covenant of the union blessings? Of Christ how can a believer be the benefit church, from the covenant like blessings? Husband, to yes, the wife. from my front here, Revelation anyone? chapter 19, verse 7. Let okay. us be glad from and the, rejoice okay, thank you. and Please give honor give to him. 
For the marriage of the Lamb is come. By having That's relationship Jesus, with God. Of our Redeemer. Thank you. Behold, by the maintaining of holiness God of life, that takes by away having relationship the sin with God, trusting God, and keeping His own come. part of the covenant. Three points in the that. lesson this See morning. Mystery, God makes it. Church and believers readiness to walk in the truth. God blesses and delivers readiness be to walk in, in the truth. Clean and wide Psalm 86. I read from verse right 1. Bow down thy the ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve to my soul, for I am holy. Oh, thou my God, church. save my servant that trusted mystery. in thee. Be merciful unto me, O oh Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. In your the psalmist with great lamentation poured out we his heart look at to the Lord to seek help from the merciful God. To look at his how do we make command, this marriage, his commandment, this family, his commitment, model, his concentration and trust in the Lord gave him the confidence that God will show mercy unto him. To be Believers, in the prayers, and concentration to the Lord should not be confined five. to periods of sorrow and distress. We are enjoying in the scriptures to Pray without season to and without fainting. What we're looking he for. is a merciful we're God the and faithful to answer our prayer. Look at the book of Psalm 34. Psalm 34. I will read verse 17. Psalm 34, verse 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivered them out of their troubles. And you also, you read word, from verse and you let uh, Psalm 86, verse 11, we have read, Lord, we discover that we, never we with it is a willing heart, that and never wanting to toss to and fro with errors and tradition of men, the psalmist pleaded with the Lord to teach and, and unite his heart the message, with by the grace him. Of the Lord, Look at that in Psalm 86, I read. Verse 11, teach me thy way, O Lord. Psalm 86, verse 11, teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart and to fear thy name. So in this Psalm 86, verse 11, our Lord and Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And anyone that wants to see the Lord must come through him. And believers must learn to walk with him with all their heart, trusting and uniting with him. I am Brother Stephen Labo, welcome you to the Palak Double Church, Charles Beach, United States, the Lord, a place where the undiluted word of God is being preached. Fervently, you are about to listen to our generous pretender, Pastor W.F. Another Kumi, question, what is the significance of a pure heart? In a believer's walk with ready. the Lord, Pick up your pain significant. Paper, Let me get the answer from my right hand side. Anyone there? You significant. The Last day of the retreat in Jesus' name. In Without any doubt, Lord, since we started on Thursday, any answer? the Lord has been working with us. The Lord has ministered unto yeah, us through God our Father in the God, Lord and, and through various anointed ministers of the gospel. And all these ministers have poured out their hands and, heart. and, and the heart of the Lord unto us. That as we prepare you, we are preparing ourselves oh, so that at the end of the day, both we, the preacher, and you, the hearers, together will rejoice in glory. And I am praying that we all make it to the to end in Lord. Jesus' name. I'm here to let you know that, that it is one thing to begin a race. It is another is thing to finish to that race. It is so one thing to start well. It is another thing to finish well. It is one thing to begin to strong. It is another thing is to finish strong. I pray you will finish Lord strong Robert in Jesus' name. That is why at this time we are looking at the message 
titled Running the Race Courageously. Running the Race. Which race are we talking about? We are talking about the Christian race. Which race are we talking about? We are talking about the race to heaven. Because in life, generally, we are all in the race. Whether you are a believer or you are not a believer. Whether you are a Christian or you are non Christian, we are all in a race. But what determines the difference between us is the goal before us, the end of that race, the journey in which we have embarked upon. Whether uh, you are, some people are in the race to become a politician, some are in the race to become wealthy or rich in the things of this life, some are in the race to become academically up there, some are in the race for different, some are in the race for beauty contests, but we are in the race for heaven. I said we are in the race for heaven, and we will make it to the end in Jesus' name. And adopted into Understand the holy that as we say Why we are in the rain, in the race, there are some people that, that started the race and today they two. are no more. For some of them have even died and gone uh, to wherever they have ended. As so we talk about the race, as of, uh, let a, me quickly tell us a few things uh, about a race. Two, Again, the race oh is Lord, something God that everybody runs. The difference is whether you are running according to the will of God, the plan and the purpose purpose of God, or you are running according to the will and the plan of man. Whether you are running to please the Lord, or you are running to please the world. That is what makes the race that we are all running. Understand, race is a goal. A goal that must be pursued with speed, with focus, and with determination. It's a race that we pursue. Anybody in life, whenever they say they're in a race, they are always in a haste to get to that ending. And I can tell you that we are not letting down, we are not letting up our determination to make it to heaven, and we will get there in Jesus' name. When we talk about the race, race takes a lot of energy to do if it must be successful. If you At must finish point, well, if I must finish well, to God, then we need to put in a lot of energy, a lot of strength into it. Race is wrong with other competitors running along with us. Let's take a quick look the at the book of Corinthians. I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and see what the Lord is saying concerning this race that we are engaged in. It says, Know ye not that they which run sorrow, in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So wrong that NSA. ye may obtain, so and every man that striveth for, mas for the mastery is temperate in all things. God. Now Jesus they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But a we, what kind of crown? An incorruptible. I therefore so wrong. And you therefore so wrong. Not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that fit that the air, but I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. That is why I'm telling us that race, the race in which we are in, is to be run by I other people, competitors, of the competitors, and uh, with these competitors in the race, as we saw it in verse 24, understand that not everyone will make it forever. to the end. The Bible the says, they that, that run in that race, run on run all, but one receive the price. I pray heaven. you will receive so the price the in Jesus' name. I told us that we're all in the race. The that the race is, is a goal that must be pursued be with speed, with focus and determination. That is a race that requires a lot of energy and the totality of our life. I told us that there are other competitors. You are in that race, I'm in that race, others are in the same race. And as we are in the race, understand, some are tripping and falling. Some have been disqualified. You will not be disqualified in Jesus' name. 
the race, if it is something we all engage in, if it is something that we pursue with speed, with focus and determination, if it is something that takes all the energy and the strength that we need, especially when you look at the athletes, they're putting all the muscle, all the vein, the bone, everything comes to work. Their brain is calculating. They want to move at a very, very fast way. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy. And if that is the case, with a lot of other people in the race, understand also that there are spectators. The there are people that are watching you. To him there are people that are watching me to see worship, whether you will win that race. And I declare in the name of the Lord, you will win. And obedient to his word. There are people in that the are watching you. And quite a number of them, God, 20, your maker, 89, Jesus, your savior, they are watching whether you will make it to the very end. I have found David, the angels in heaven in my holy that have been assigned have to I you, they are watching him. whether you my will make it to heaven. The heroes of the faith, those that have, have, have come before David us and now are in glory, they went through the trials of life, the battles of life, the storms of life, they passed through the flood, they passed through the fire, they passed through everything, they made it to the very end. They are watching whether you will run the way they run, whether you will endure the way they endure. I pray by the grace of God, we will make it to the end in Jesus' name. But now understand that the enemy of your soul, the devil is also watching. How you are running and strategizing how to hinder you from making it. He will fail. Over our enemy I said he will fail. Over the In the name of, of Jesus, the demons position, are also watching and strength, how and you are running enlargement and to see whether they will lose and you will win. And the line is drawn already. Is the, the battle line is drawn. As for me, I know who is going to win. I know as for you who is going to win. Prayer. Those of you that believe the Lord holding on firm to the profession of your faith, not minding what happens in life, together we are winning in Jesus' name. But now pay attention. There are people in the world that are watching. Your fellow believer is watching you. The unbelievers are also watching you. The people you have preached unto, they are watching you. The people you never got to preach unto, but they saw your life. They were observing your life. And then they were admiring your life. And then when the storm rages, when the wind blows, they are watching whether you will make it. I declare in the name of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, that you will make it to the end in Jesus. Jesus name. So there are competitors. There are competitors. There are com and then if all these are there, we need to understand that there is need for preparation. The race requires a thorough preparation. And this preparation must include all kinds of sacrifices that we can make. And uh, if you look at the people of the world, those that play soccer, the people of the world, those that say uh, for uh, for making money, uh, if you look at the people of the world, the modern the modern, the modern people of the world, if you look at the athletes of the world, they make a lot of sacrifices to perform and to be where they are. And we, as believers, cannot do less. I say we cannot do less, and that is why whatever preparation. Physical preparation, spiritual preparation, psychological preparation that we need to make. We will make everything and then we will make it to glory in Jesus' name. So then we understand that the Christian race is a race that we must win. Because it's one of two things. It's either you win it or you lose it. Why are we talking this way? Because, again, not all that started were able to finish up. Turn with me your Bible to the second book of Samuel, chapter 1, verse 27. Second Samuel, chapter 1, verse 27. Thank you, Father, for And hearing. see what Jesus the scripture is pray. saying Amen. concerning the possibility of losing.
be raised. We'll raise verse 27 and then we'll back up a little bit. It says, how are the mighty falling and the weapons of war perished? How are the mighty falling and the weapons of war perished? Now back up to verse 19 and see why you are running the race effectively, successfully. How you are the, 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 the favorite Can of the Lord, the beauty in the eye of the Lord, the glory the of your time, verse 19. It says, the beauty of Israel is slain upon the high, thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in God. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Any Ye mountains of Gibeah, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offering, for there let the, the shield of the mighty the is finally cast away. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil yes, the, from the blood of the slain. Jehovah from the part of the mighty, the, the bow, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul so returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and in pleasant in their lives, the and in their Exodus, death, Leviticus, they were not divided. So they were swifter than eagles, they were stronger Jesus. than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul. I pray the war will not weep over you. I pray that heaven will not weep over you. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul. Who clothes you in scarlet with other delights? Who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel? How are the mighty falling in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou was slain in thy high places. I pray. After you have gone up so high, you will not fall in Jesus' name. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Everybody read verse 27. He did not come to, to abolish the Old Testament, but he came to fulfill it. How are the mighty falling? How are the mighty so, falling? Mighty in faith. How can we know which mighty in war, of the Old Testament mighty in a miracle, signs and wonder. How are they falling? How are they falling? Uh, and as you, know, you look at your life, as you look at your environment, you, you will come to understand that All when you came to the Lord, when you came to the faith, there are Testament some people, if you are vigilant enough, the there are people that have been in the race ahead of you, that you were even thinking and praying, and Lord, this is a good example to follow, and to then you the are aspiring to be like them, but as time passes by, him, you look around and an such people are no more in the faith. You look around, some people have been put into a corner, sin. deceived by the now, enemy. The such people, such Testament, people, you know, uh, there, there is this particular individual years back and the Lord that was a worker in our church, the Palai Bible Church, not just a worker, but a key leader, a key leader, a coordinator in the church. And, be able and to all of his sudden, the enemy deceived him. And we then he the left the church. And after some time, he came back. The is going coming the back now, not coming back uh, to the church. Tabernacle. They came back I'm to see the, the general superintendent for whatsoever reason. And then by the time he came, his beard has to be. Now he had grown beard. And then and now the he's called a prophet. And now the way he's not talking, now I am prophet B. A I am prophet that and he has been deceived. I pray you will not be deceived in Jesus' name. And then when the you look at the life, when you look at the, uh, everything, there is nothing the to correlate God relationship with God other than just wanting to be called a prophet. I pray that evil power of darkness will not prevail in against man. you in Jesus' name. Sin we are running to win a prize, and it's a race God. that must be run Anyone with the only single option of winning. Sin, there is no other option. In my own judgment, dictionary, there is no option of losing. There is no maybe I will fail. I will win, and you will win. I will succeed, and you will succeed in Jesus' name. 
is lost. A, a, a loss. It's not for you, it's not for me. Paul indicated a pattern of running that wins the prize and admonish us to so wrong that we may obtain. And if we are going to run to obtain the prize that is set before us, what then do we do? We run the race with conviction. Conviction. How safe are you? How safe are we? Are you really convinced that a man can live above sin? Are you really convinced that that a man that can live above self and live above the world and live above the devil. Are you really, really convinced that, that except that a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God? Or you think he can still live a wishy washy life and then make it to heaven? Are you really convicted of your sin, of your transgression? Are you saved? Are you born again? Are you washed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus? So you must run the race with conviction. Conviction, and, and then you run the race with caution. There are a lot of traps on the way. There are a lot of pot uh, portals on the way. There are a lot of things the enemy wants to do to bring you down, to destroy you, to eliminate you, and then make you regret at the end of your life. So we run with caution. With caution. That is why First Corinthians chapter nine. We read this before, but let's look at just uh, the twenty-six verse over there and see Moreover, what the word so of the Lord says. It says, and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. We run the race with conviction. We run it with caution. We run with concentration. Concentration. That's why I said it is something we run with speed, with focus and determination. We run with concentration, no distraction in any way or form. Women, men, money, wealth, popularity, fame, position, power, nothing of all those will distract us in. Jesus name. We run the race also with the scripture world. as our companion. We run with the companion in the scripture in because the time in which we live is such a time that requires you and me being serious life, with our Bible. Total surrender, it's such a time that a care is not taken. Even the very elect will be deceived and, and be swept away. We run them, with the Bible. In times like this, you need the, the Bible. And I pray that the enemy will not take the Bible away from us in Jesus' name. This is a time that people have twisted the Bible up and down and they're applying it in their own way and turning it to sweet themselves, but sacrifice. when you know the For word of God told it to show thyself and prove them to God, a what man that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I it might not sin against thee, and the law will give us the understanding of the word in Jesus' name. Testament. We run the race with the great commission, the great commission, the great commission. The great commission. Understand that the more you preach to others, say, you are preaching you to yourself. Yourself. Maybe I should ask you, because this is what I personally feel myself. The more I tell people don't do this, the more I tell people don't do that, I realize that I'm telling myself the same thing. First of all, how about you? When you are preaching to people, the first person you are really preaching to is who? It's yourself. Yourself, if yourself, so listen to this. The more you allow compromise in the life of other people, is an indication that you are compromising yourself. The more that you are not serious and decisive in dealing with issues of sin in the life of others, is an indication that you are not walking with God, that you are a liar, that you have the form of godliness but deny the power thereof. But the more you change. If somebody Jesus don't Christ see, you know you stay away you from tampering with anything that does not belong to you. The more you check people don't tell a lie, the more you know that if you lie, a greater judgment will come upon you. You don't, you know, you check people, you can't dress worldly, love, love, love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, then you know yourself that you need to comport yourself and position yourself in such a way that you are acceptable, not just 
house of the man, but unto the God of heaven. And so you run with the great commission. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How can you be telling people to escape the danger of the world? And you are running into that danger. You know what I have discovered? When anybody say, I am saved, I am born again, and they are not preaching the gospel anywhere and everywhere is an indication they are not ready for heaven. One of the signs of a true believer is the preaching of the gospel. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always until of life. The end they of the world. The Lord will be with you. The, the Lord will walk with you. God. The Lord will sustain you. The Lord will support you. The Lord will strengthen you in Jesus' name. Let us remain and women God. of the world without if fear of anybody. Man can only kill the body. They cannot kill your soul. You. And what if you die suddenly, it hastens you up to glory. And what exactly are we really enjoying in the world? What is it that we're enjoying? That we don't want to go if we really believe heaven, you fear no man, you fear no one, you will stand for sure. God, stand with they God, and declare the total answer of the Lord. And now, that is why, we as we go about preaching the gospel, we run the race also with confidence. We run with confidence. Paul said, for I am persuaded. In all this Are you persuaded within you? That we be he said, I know whom I have believed. Do you, you know who you have believed? The when there is problem coming, do you know your God, God is there? Really when there are oppositions and challenges, do you have that confidence that if God be what you, nobody can be against you. The Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. An so then, you run what with the word of comfort. The Lord has run the race with the word of comfort. A lot of challenges are out there. But you know, Jesus said, in the world, you will have what? Tribulation. But in the law, what will you have? Really look upon the passage there is today. peace for you I in Christ Jesus. God, in the midst of the storms of life, there is Teach peace for you. And if there is sickness, there is a promise of healing for you. If there is any affliction, there is promise of deliverance for you. If there is anything you are going through, remember, 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 at the end of it, you will make it to glory. The Bible says, Comfort ye one another with this say the joy of the, the Father that Teach our time is limited here on earth, but unlimited in, in heaven. Today, and when we, we get over go there, it's going to be eternity with God. with God. That is enough to give us the comfort. Lord, and and then alter. you run the race if with clear vision. Way, clear vision. Clear vision. Clear vision. You know what you are doing. You know why you are doing what you are doing. And you say, you stand your ground. No matter what happens, you run the race with the commandments of the Lord. In not the commandments of Let's man. Rise up and, pray. and that is why the when the apostles were told to stop mentioning the name of Jesus, promised, uh, uh, they, they said unto the people, don't just say, do we obey man rather than God? And so they were today, obedient to the instructions and the commandments of, of the Lord in everything that they were doing. And if we are going to win this race we are talking about, then we run the race without compromise. You don't compromise with yourself. You don't, you don't compromise with your wife. You don't compromise with your husband. You don't compromise with your pastor. You don't compromise with your church member. You compromise with nobody. You compromise with no employer, no employee in any way. You compromise with no government. After all, after all, at the end of it, you are the one that will stand before the judgment throne of God to give account for your life. All these other people will not be there with you. Your time together is just for a short period of time. You have your children, if and your children reason, will not want you to do the will of God. It's a matter of time. You your son will leave you. This relationship your with daughter the Lord. will leave you. you have seen the and then it will remain life. you. What then will you Please, speak why not God? Walk? Your wife eventually, yes, whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. But a day will come, something will put asunder. Death will put asunder. When your husband dies or your wife dies, what becomes of you? I will answer you. 
I what becomes of you. you. That is things. why we, you let, the, the, uh, we say, let others see Jesus in you. So run the race without compromise. We run the race without covetousness. A lot of ministers today are covetous. They are in the ministry for what they will eat and what they will drink. Not because of heaven. That's why you have to be careful saying, of who you are listening to, to and how you are listening you. to them. What are they talking about? What Whatever is their goal? What is their focus? Covetousness has God taken over say, the church today. You also want you. to run the race All without complaining. Surrender complaining. everything. Surrender complaining. Your sin. Listen to he this. No matter you. where he you go in life, you, he you he get what you are looking you. for. If you are looking for an excuse, you'll find an excuse. You are looking for a problem, you find a problem. You are looking for somebody who is not perfect, you'll find somebody who is not In perfect. Jesus Forget name, complaining, be ready for heaven. I said, be ready for heaven. I said, be ready for heaven. And the Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. Now, as we talk about running the Christian race, what is the opposite of courage? Please courage me. If you put that in another way, what do you call it? It is fear. From your it is fear. Fear and discouragement they are doing that works together. That you have made Why is so it that some people that started today, well we are backing out of the race? Why is it that some that were excited the life, about serving the Lord, following the Lord, are no name. more in the but faith. Why the is it that those that were running before are now standing? Why is it that those that were, that were running before are now sitting and no longer concerned about the Jesus things name, of God? I will show us a few things right now about the causes of fear and the discouragement that hinders courageous running. That hinders courageous running. The causes of fear and discouragement some people when you look at them it is sin and disobedience unto God sin and disobedience let's look at Genesis chapter 3 verse 10 we see the case of Adam there and then in verse 10 and they said I had thy voice in the garden and I was what's the next word I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Transgression brings fear. Sin brings fear. The same person you have been free to go to before, now you cannot go freely anymore because of fear. What brought that fear? Sin brought the fear. The person you have been free to call and communicate with easily, now you can't do that because something wrong had taken place. The Lord himself will help us in Jesus' name. Fear, uh, 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 dis dis disobedience is one thing. Another thing is disappointment. You have an expectation. And those expectations are not met. Then you are discouraged. And then you the fear of, will I succeed? Will I make it? It's there. And then you want to begin to cut corners. You will not cut corners in Jesus' name. At other times, some people are deceived. And because of deception, they are detoured. They are turned away from the path of life, the path of righteousness, the path of holiness, the path of uprightness. And then you see yourself, you want to get married, and the enemy is deceiving you. Well, in this church, look around how many men are in the church. One, two, three. And how many women are in the church? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three men to ten women. And this church, they don't allow polygamy. What is my chance of getting married? I think I need to begin to look outward. It doesn't work that way. God will give you your own spouse. If it means for God to import demand for you, for your sake, your own will come. How, how wonderful will it be if your husband is important? Somebody say amen. 
That means it's, it's brand new. It's different from all the common world. Why don't you say, Lord, I don't care who is here and who is not here. I want the best from you and you get the best from God in Jesus' name. But you know, the devil want to deceive you and tell you, well, uh, why don't you begin to compromise, dress like this, dress like that, change your style, uh, uh, walk like this, uh, so that the people out there will know that, yeah, even though you go to deeper life, but uh, 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 your body is there, deeper life, but your mind is out there in Sodom. You will not be a bastard in Jesus' name. Stand your ground in the Lord. Stay with us. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Or you are in a business and the enemy is telling you, well, in America, even though they say no bribing, but uh, uh, they know the way they do it. And then how they get the business. You know how you cut corner. You know how you give this gift and give that, uh, that gift. And you know you are bribing and you are corrupting yourself. Man may not see. Man may not know. You are being deceived. If you die in that situation, you will miss heaven, no matter what you have done in the past. This age will bring fear. And then many a times, a lot of all, when we have done things that are wrong, falling into the deceit, the seat, the seat of the enemy, and then we go to God in prayer. You know what I have discovered in life? When you are not standing right with God, you cannot stand right in prayer. When you're not standing right with God, you cannot speak with authority and with confidence. Instead of you going in prayer and taking authority, you go in prayer and pleading and apologizing every day of your life. You make yourself a servant of sin. A servant of sin. The Lord will deliver in Jesus' name. So, deceit is another thing. The other, the, at other time, is disease. Some people, because of sickness, because of infirmity that will not go on time. They think, well, I need to seek for help somewhere else. I knew of somebody that was coming to our church. And then it turned out she was sick. And uh, they prayed and nothing seemed to have happened. And later on, before I knew it, I was told they took her to somewhere, and with further inquiry, it was an harbourless place they took her to. To go and get some care. If you get to a point in your life that your God cannot do it, it's a terrible state. And yet, God will allow some things in life to bring out the things that are on the inside of you. If you're a proud person, God will allow some things to bring that pride out. If you're a worldly person, God will allow some things to bring that, uh, that out. If you're not stable with the Lord, God will allow some things to really test and prove you. To cut a long story short, she died before the shrine. She died and went to her fire. I knew of another man. That gave his life to Christ. And this one, I actually worked with him. And uh, it wasn't of deeper life, but eventually came to deeper life. Everything turned around by the grace of God. Eventually, he felt sin. And then, people were suggesting to him, go here and go there. And he said, no, I am a child of God. My God is able. Even if God chooses not to heal me now, I will not compromise at this last stage of my life. Eventually, he died and he went to glory and I rejoice in the Lord. I pray that your last love will not be a disaster in Jesus' name. So, disease, and it can be any kind of disease. You know, at other times, it is division in the church. And you don't know something's happened. You don't understand that sometimes the wind blows. And the storm rages. And when the wind is blowing the forest, all the trees, both the tall and the short one, everything blows like this, blows like this. Now understand, the wind is blowing not because of the healthy trees, but because of the unhealthy one. So that all the unhealthy branches and the limbs and all the unhealthy leaves and that are dry can fall off. You will not fall off in Jesus' name. And then you say, if there can be a division in a church like ours that preaches holiness, there is no division anywhere. I hope you understand. 
I'm just telling you what happens in different places. Uh, uh, maybe there might have been in the past. I don't know of any right now. So I'm just preaching. And then, you know, say, when in a church like this, if there could be this kind of division, I don't think I want to stay. Hey, listen, except you remain in the act, you will not be saved. If that can happen in a church that preaches holiness, righteousness, and purity, what then do you think you are going to get out there? What do you think you will get out there? And that is why sometimes some people that think I can stand alone, I can stand by myself, they bolt out of the church. When they get out there and then they test the ground, they realize that what they thought is bad here is greater mightier than what is out there those of them that have the fear of god those of them that are determined for heaven those of them that are humble and really want to make it to the end they put ego aside they put aside what man will say they come back to the church and they say we are back you will be back if in your mind you are gone i declare today the holy ghost will bring you back in jesus name and if physically you are gone, you only came to visit, you are tested out there, you have seen what is going on. I pray the power of God will bring you back into the fold in Jesus' name. The enemy allows some things to happen so that those that are not free, that are not serious, can be, can, 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 can be cut off. You will not be cut off in Jesus' name. At all that times, the problem that makes some people to have fear and then quit the faith is their unmet desire, desires of men, desires of men. And at other times, at other times, you see some people, it is the sustained, unrelenting battle they are facing. They forgot that the Christian life is a battle. Ephesians chapter 6. Looking at it from this time, the Bible tells us, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of, of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we wrestle not against, help me here, flesh and blood, but against one, principalities, two, power, three, rulers of darkness of this world. And for spiritual wickedness, where in high places they forget that we are in a battle. That from the very day you gave your life to Christ, you got enlisted in that battle. And they forgot that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong foes. Every stronghold of the enemy in your life are crumbling in Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel chapter 21. First Samuel chapter 21. I'm looking at it from the start. First Samuel 21. This night. Here in verse 9, the Bible says, And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that, give it unto me. Give it unto me, and give it a road, and fled that day. For what the next word? The fear of Saul. The fear of Saul. He had let it be wrong again. And went into Achish, the king of God. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the Lamb? 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 He ran away from his place of appointment. He ran away from his place of blessing. And even though he has not been ordained, he has been anointed, but not yet ordained, even the enemies can't know he's an ordained king already. Listen to this. The hand of God is upon you. 
The power of God is upon you. Stand your ground and don't run in Jesus' name. They did not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David is ten thousand, and David laid up this words where in his heart and was so afraid of Achish, the king of God. Now, what drove him away from Israel? Fear. Now, what is happening before Achish, where he ran into? Fear within, fear without. Fear paralyzes, you don't be paralyzed. Verse 13, and he changed, what's the next word? His behavior. His behavior. Is that not the problem with many of us? Because of fear, we can't stand our ground. We can declare that we are Christian. We change our conduct, our behavior, our attitude in compromise. He changed behavior before them and painted himself mad in their hands and scribbled on the doors of the gate and let his speech fall down upon his beard. That is what fear does. Now God will deliver you from fear in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings. Chapter 19, I look at it from verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with that, how he had slain all the prophets all, uh, with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. And much also, if I make not my life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servants there. Who are we talking about here? Elijah. Verse 4. But he himself went in this journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might you will not die. You will not die. Lift up your right hand right now and say in the name of Jesus, I shall not die, but leave to declare the great work of the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will preserve you. You know, thank you. Put down your hands. Elijah quit the ministry before his time. You will not quit before your time in Jesus' name. Christian calling and ministerial calling. Go back with unlimited power from above and supported by the brethren and the local church. Experiences have told us that power from above is not sufficient for some people. And because of fear, they run from their place of refuge, they run from their place of protection, and they run to the camp of the enemy. They will not run to the camp of the enemy in Jesus' name. We are told in the book of uh, Timothy, First Timothy, I look at chapter 1, verse 7. Here the Bible says, that's uh, First Timothy chapter 1, First Timothy, Chapter 1, verse 7. It says, Desiring to be teachers of the law, um, understanding neither what they say or where they are found. I think I'm getting the wrong thing. I'm trying to get the place where the Bible says that God has not given us all the spirit of death. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Thank you. For God has not given up. The spirit of fear. Somebody say amen. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is your portion. That is my portion in Jesus' name. God is not the author of fear. Anytime you are afraid of making it, that is the enemy coming your way. Get rid of the enemy and you will make it in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 14 verse 10. Exodus. Chapter 14. We look at the 10th verse here. It, it says, And when Pharaoh grew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. 
now put things up for him. When they saw the enemy, they were afraid. But something good happened. What did they do? They cried unto the Lord. Don't run away from the presence of the Lord. Remain in the Lord. No matter how you are feeling, call upon the Lord. Sometimes it is human. But never allow fear to overwhelm you, to overtake you. Peter was in the boat. He saw Jesus walking on the water. And then he said, Jesus, if that be you, bid me to come. He had the courage at that time. And then Peter, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith, with that text, he stepped out. And you know Peter was a fisherman. Peter knew much more than that, that the water is not a solid rock. You step into it, you drown. But then, he kept what looking unto Jesus. Jesus, is that you? Looking unto Jesus. And then, I could imagine Peter picking up the first leg out of the boat and then trying to put it in the water. And then, as he touches the water, it was solid under him. Is it real? Is it real? Is it real? On Christ, a solid rock I stand. All other ground are sinking sand. But pay attention. After Peter brought the second leg out, he was standing, he was Tell walking. Is it real? There and then Peter suddenly storm. realized, I am on top there of the water. Supposing so it is just I an ice that promised. forms. And I'll everything gives way. Be what becomes of me? The That's moment Peter began morning. to think of that in fear, what happened to Peter? He began to sink. You will not sink in Jesus' God. name. But he then says, Peter did something good. He did something good. He did not call I unto the other apostles pray. because he knew not they cannot help. Sometimes you are going to someone that cannot help you. That is gone what did he do? He cried unto the Lord and the Lord saved him. He will save you. As he made you know, at another time, at another time, at another time, I'm just saying that just for adventure, something happened and fear came, came, came in. What not because of sin, but because what of the wind of life, because of the storm of life. Break, that wants to make you give up your faith. You. you call on his God, you cry unto God. Christ was in the boat with the disciples. That is and then the in Mark chapter 4. And then as they were traveling, then the wind, the storm, understand, of the this night, the wind will blow. Let's worship our the storm God will rain, for but they will not overtake. A covenant keeping and God. then Jesus was resting. What a reassuring word and as the, like the wind this, was blowing and the storm raging, it I was beating into the bowl. And water was coming in. Now, the people there understand they were fishermen. As long they did not jump out of the boat. To him and you follow him. They remained there. What did they do? My they cried peace, to the Lord, Master, Master, carest thou not that we perish? My Many a times you have issues. You are running to unbelievers. Many a times you have a problem. You are running back to your family. Call upon the Lord. He will make a way for you. And then Jesus rose up. He rebuked the wind. He rebuked the storm. And Everything he became calm. In your life, peace be still. As you remain faithful to in your him, family, peace be still. As you continue to live On your job, peace be still. That problem in your morning, body, I speak right now. I peace you. be still because in Jesus' name. None of all those will take you away from the law. None of all those will shift him. your faith and as focus away from the King of Glory him. in Jesus' name. All these things causes Lord, a problem. You know, sometimes it's because we overestimate the, the enemy. That's the reason for fear. Increase, they will do this, they will so do that. You forgot that you are a man and a woman of authority. That the Bible says that you shall, shall declare a thing, decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Whatever no matter you how you want things to, to be in life, you are a king. Decree it, and it will come to pass. The our problem is, we overestimate the power of the enemy and we under, underestimate our the Lord with, And then we have forgotten the that the weapons of our warfare power. are not carnal but mighty through God. Through God. You know, at other times, some people is self confident. Self confident. 
Tell me somebody in Receive the Bible that self confidence almost destroyed him. Father, we are grateful. Peter. For this. Peter. That your children have brought self commandments confidence, your put your confidence in the Lord. I pray that I said, Lord, you will in the law and it will keep you, you will to the end in Jesus' name. At other times, it is the statistics earth. of people Continue that have fallen. For your when you look at this one, that has Thank happened, you, that Heavenly one, Father. that has happened, in and Jesus then you look name, at some people you met pray. in the church, you met in the faith, and you the way they are living their life, even though they talk the about, they preach about it, but the they are not living the life. Around. And then yourself is saying, oh, and you continue I don't think this thing is real. For as long as you're in this tabernacle, you no can't live pray. above sin. It's a lie. For you can live above nation. sin. Tell somebody, you the can Lord live above sin. Is the governor. I said, tell you somebody, you can live above sin. You want to pray. And it's say not. to somebody, because you are now said, saying to somebody, pray. I will live above sin. This covenant of if you will not, I will. By the grace of God, I will. With the help of God, I will. By the power of God, I will. I will make it to the end in Jesus' name. Let your peace I have a good news for you. I said I have a good news for you. I have some brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, that run Ask this race, and they made it to the end. Your peace reign in and our every nation time I go, through, you think overseer doesn't go to challenge. You think pastor doesn't go to challenge. You think superintendent doesn't go to challenge. Everybody does. Everybody does. When but whenever it happens, those of us that are standing, this is what we do. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from no God, the maker don't of heaven disobey. and earth. Don't and then we look at people like Peter. Peter made it. I will make it. Paul the apostle made the it, I will make it. Moses, that initially, out, with, because of fear, ran away peace. from Egypt to, 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 to the wilderness. Moses eventually made it. Look at because Elijah, we read governor. about a few minutes ago, because that ran away from a woman. <laughs> Who is pursuing you? Peace a woman? In our nation. A Jezebel? Jesus, we want Woe to, to that Jezebel. In the north. In the south, don't run from in that the west, Jezebel. In the east, because God has given you power and authority and over that Jezebel. Reigns, you can be Decree sure it will come to pass in Jesus' is name. The heart of man. Who is Amin's that individual? The and Ahab wanting to take your life Amin's that is took the life of Nabot? No, if God be Amin's for us. No, I said if God be for us. The gospel of Christ, nobody can be against you. Our walk you will not here die. On earth. You will not die. You, you will not die. Lord, Moses was told by God, go back to the Pharaoh. Is marching on. Go and the back to Pharaoh. Of hell shall never and he went back to Pharaoh. Never prevail and he finished his ministry. His you want to decree finish your ministry. Lord. Joshua as chapter 5, verse 13, causes of fearlessness. As your church, Joshua militants, chapter 5, we're and looking the at the 13th verse can never, there. We never there the Bible says, that, confess that, verse 13, the gate of hell will not prevail and it came to pass, when Joshua you was by church, Jericho, I am the church, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, you, and behold, there stood a man over against him you want to pray. with the sword Lord, drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for our adversary? To be hmm. obedient. Verse 14. And he to said, Nay. It's a covenant Nay. keeping God. If there's but anything you want to go home with today, the of the is God Lord, I is faithful. He's faithful to all and his, his promises. Face. To he the has all the power and did to fulfill it, them. And he said has all him, the power to what bring them to accomplishment. My Lord unto his servant. In different and the captain ways. Of the Lord's Pray for the church of God. Unto Joshua. 
we continue Lose to march on. From off the we continue foot. to do the will the of the Lord. We Pastor continue to obey the gospel. The gospel of the Lord Jesus. Paul said, I am not disobedient to the heavenly vision. We continue to live in Joshua holiness and talks. righteousness of life. We continue to he was live alone, a life that leading is to God and obey him in readiness Joshua did not for know or realize the church, that there is an invisible personality working with him. You are part of the church. Lord, Joshua thought maybe it was just uh, 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 setting up the stone and, and doing this and that coming. that made them to cross the Red Sea. Joshua did not realize that there is somebody that the sea saw, that Jordan saw, that made things to happen. Very quickly, we are coming back to this. Open your Bible to the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm. I believe it's 114. Psalm 114. I wait for you to get there. Psalm 114. If you are there, say amen. If you are not yet there, say wait for me. All right, we are waiting. More than ever before. Amen. But hurry up. To this because this today, race must be with speed, with focus, and determination. Praise the Lord. Pray. Now, if you are the there, say amen. Arise and one for thee. When Israel him. went out of Egypt, the, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel is dominion. The sea. You have listened to and our pastor, as days is, Pastor W. So F. Is Way, strength or other anointed minister of God, strength of our upon ministry. Him. Let the, the word sink in your heart of the Lord and upon him. To supernatural your strength upon is our him. belief by the grace of the Lord. Weak. That he will not come be and tired. worship with us. He will keep receiving from the Lord church. and giving the word to us. But and we will be obedient to the word. Drive. Our we have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30. The way we live we our, our Bible study as we go back home, on every Monday as we go back to our offices, from 7 we to 8.30. As we are doing so, Let's I, pray for the him. grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and it will never be the same. Why Thank are you here? God bless you. What seekest thou? What are your expectations? The Bible says, surely there is an end, and that your expectation shall not be cut off. I believe you are here with an expectation tonight. I believe you are here to receive from the Lord today. Pray unto the Lord. Lord, 